This is Crook. In ancient times, Crook worked for himself. He had his own fishing net, and whatever fish he caught belonged to him. He owned both his tools and the product of his labor. Life was simple, until one day a wealthy capitalist named Mr. Shelby arrived in Sadafabad. He built a large net-making factory. The factory's nets were cheaper and better than Crook's handmade ones. Very soon, no one bought from Crook anymore, and he went bankrupt. With nothing left, Crook was forced to work for Mr. Shelby. Crook no longer owned the tools. The only thing he still had was his ability to work. The contract was simple. Crook worked all day, and in return, he received 20 shells as wages, just enough to stay alive and buy his daily food. This is where the main story of Marxian economics begins. In one working day, Crook produced 10 nets. Mr. Shelby sold each net for 10 shells. That means Crook created 100 shells of value each day with his labor, but he only received 20 shells as wages. The question is, where did the extra 80 shells go? That extra 80 shells is called surplus value. It's the profit that goes into the pocket of Mr. Shelby, the owner of the factory and the means of production. From Marx's perspective, this profit came from the exploitation of Crook's labor. Crook wove nets every day, but he no longer owned any of them. He couldn't even afford to buy one of the nets he himself had made with a full day's wage. He had become alienated from the product of his labor, from the work process, and from his own creativity. Marx called this feeling alienation. To increase profits, Mr. Shelby forced the workers to work more or reduce their wages, while the workers, for the sake of survival, demanded higher wages. This conflict of interests is what Marx called class struggle. So what does the story of Crook and Mr. Shelby teach us about Marxian economics? First, society is divided into two main classes. The class that owns the means of production, like Mr. Shelby, and the class that sells nothing but its labor power, like Crook. Second, the concept of surplus value refers to the difference between the value a worker creates and the wage he receives. According to Marx, this surplus value is the main source of profit for the capitalist class. Third, this system naturally leads to class conflict because the interests of the worker, higher wages, and the interests of the capitalist, higher profit, are always opposed. Marxian economics is a critical analysis of these relationships and attempts to explain the inner workings of capitalism. Whether we agree with the theory or not, it remains one of the most influential ideas in history. What's your opinion about this analysis?